you are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Today's episode is brought to you by Sonos. Sonos, the official sponsor of ESPN College Football. Go to Sonos.com to learn more. Folks, this might be the most excited, might be the most like thankful, might be the most weird feeling after a loss on the weekend at least here in quite some time because Arkansas yes lost to Alabama like we all expected them to we knew that Arkansas was going to have to play a near perfect game and they didn't but 42 to 35 the final score on the road in Tuscaloosa you lose to the number two team in the country by a touchdown not only that but You were a three-touchdown underdog in this game. And not only that, Bryce Young, who I think is going to win the Heisman, throws for 559 yards and five touchdowns and no picks. And you were a touchdown away from tying this game. And let's be honest, if Arkansas would have tied it, they would have for sure gone for two, as they should have. But I, I don't feel like it was necessarily a disappointing loss. I'm not frustrated by it. I'm not throwing my arms up and just being like, well, it just goes to show you how far off Arkansas is from possibly competing for an SEC Western Division title. I I didn't feel that way. Essentially, what I felt like after this game is that you have made tremendous progress and continue to make tremendous progress under Sam Pittman in year two, where not only from year one to year two, but from the beginning of this season Towards the end of this season, you have continually gotten better. You're not perfect. You're not, you're not going to play mistake-free football. You're going to make mistakes. But you put it to the number two team in the country. You put it to Alabama, one of the closest games that they've had all season long. You played them as tough as anybody has this, this season long. And honestly, you had the game set up to where if you were going to beat Alabama – you were going to need some of the plays to happen the way they did. For instance, you were going to need a big-time play by Traylon Burks, who played phenomenal. Eight receptions, 179 yards, two touchdowns. Goes for a 66-yard touchdown uh, reception, just burns everybody in the Alabama secondary for a touchdown for a big play. You needed that play, and you got it. You needed some sort of special teams play, and you got exactly that. Reed Bauer on the fake field goal, throws a touchdown pass to Blake Kern, And what was, I don't know if it was the most well-executed play, but it was beautiful because it ended in seven points. Uh, You you were able to have that play. You really limited yourself uh, in penalties because we talked about that last week. You needed to not have penalties this week. Well, guess what? Arkansas, five penalties for 20 yards. Like That that has to be the least penalized uh, game this year so far for Arkansas. The Razorbacks went three of three on third down, on fourth down. They were perfect on fourth down. 7 of 16 on third down, 468 yards. Uh, you didn't even, the only time you turned the ball over was when uh, it was a bad snap, or at least the quarter, KJ Jefferson wasn't ready for the snap and, bat, and bobbled it and, and ended up resulting in only three points for Alabama. Like, this was the game. This was the type of game you needed to have and you needed to play in order to feel like you had a great shot against the Alabama Crimson Tide to finally knock them off. And you came up short. But there's no reason to be looking at this game as some sort of disappointment. No moral victories, I get it. But are you like you haven't been this close to Alabama in years, years? Like if you think about all the close games Arkansas had under Nick Saban, uh, the previous ones we've talked about, mainly when Alabama went on its run, 2010 and 2014 were the closest games. And guess what? You played those at home, and those teams that Alabama had were not great team or not to the same standard of those great Alabama teams, Um, which I don't think this one is is either, but you had those games at home. They were earlier in the year. Uh, You know, you just felt like things were kind of going into place to give you that opportunity to get an upset and you didn't, but you went on the road in November and put it to Alabama and made them scared. 
And there is nothing to be ashamed of. There is no reason to look at this game and be disappointed in the result. Of course, you would have rather won. We all would have rather Arkansas win. But you put the pieces together to hang with them. And you can't, as a Razorback fan, you haven't been able to say that since really 2014. And in that game, you didn't really feel like you held with them. You just felt like your defense was doing some great things and, you know, you maybe some coaching decisions. Because that was another thing, too. You know, you think about in 2010, you know, Ryan Mount couldn't throw away the ball further enough and ended up getting a pick. In 2014, I still don't understand why Brett Bielma didn't go for two and you missed extra point. But he, you know, that's that's besides the point. The point is, is that in this game, there wasn't a coaching decision that cost you or a bad play that cost you. You played with the number two team in the country. You played as well as anybody has this year. And it was unexpected. There's nothing to be ashamed of. And if you're a Razorback fan, you you can't help but be even more proud and more excited about the future under Sam Pittman. I, I just, I can't tell you how happy I am. And this is, again, the happiest I've been, the most excited I've been after a loss that I can remember. You held your own. You didn't embarrass yourself. You didn't repeat what happened in Georgia just earlier this season. You didn't have that. You went out there and you proved yourself to be worthy in being in the SEC West and proved to everybody that you're not just a cute little fun underdog story. You have a team that is good enough to compete in this conference. You proved that. Now you got to go out and finish. Now you got to go out and make it happen. And we're going to talk more about that uh, throughout this early and short week because of Thanksgiving holiday. But I want to remind everybody that today's podcast is brought to you by Prize Picks. I know you've heard about it. You've heard me talk to you about it. It's the daily fantasy made easy. It's the leader in college sports daily fantasy. Uh, offers more college football props than anyone in the world and offers the star players of the Power Five as well as the mid-majors that maybe you not even heard of. And all of your users that like to listen to this podcast and you like to go and maybe try out Daily Fantasy, this is what it's all about. Because Prize Picks will give you a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 as long as you use the promo code Locked On. Use the award-winning app on both the App Store and Google Play Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Prize Picks is safe and offers fast withdrawals. Don't hesitate. Check out the prizepicks.com website and use promo code locked on or go to your app store and download the app today. It's Prize Picks, the daily fantasy made easy. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily Arkansas Razorbacks podcast. All right, now to kind of go and dive into the box score of uh, this Razorback game against Alabama, uh, obviously we talked about some of the stats that were already thrown out, but um, you know there's both sides of it where you can really uh, try to take a lot from it. First off, K.J. Jefferson. I've said this earlier this year, and I'm going to continue to say it. He continues to prove himself to be one of my favorite Razorback quarterbacks in a long time. Uh, and you've had some good ones. Like, Of course, you loved what... Uh, the toughness of Austin Allen and a Tyler Wilson. You loved uh, what Brandon Allen was able to do in his final year and, you know, just putting up the numbers that he did. You loved Ryan Mallett and the big arm that he had. Matt Jones, one of the most electric quarterbacks that Arkansas had. Like, you've had some great ones to pick from. But the thing about KJ is not only is he extremely tough, but he's just a gamer. He's a gamer. He's not going to look as pretty as maybe some other quarterbacks do when – they're leading their team to big offensive numbers, but he just finds ways to make it happen. He gets out of the pocket. He gets he makes good decisions. He doesn't turn the ball over. Like he makes good throws. He's got a cannon of an arm. When he needs to run, he will run and he will make sure that someone pays if they try to tackle him. Like he's just a gamer. And in this game, 22 of 30 for 326 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You're telling me that K.J. Jefferson completed over about 70% of his passes for 326 yards and three touchdowns and no picks against Alabama? Sign me up. Like, who else is doing that? On the road, mind you. Like, I'm not trying to say that Matt Corral and and K.J. Jefferson are comparable because they're different quarterbacks, but Matt Corral ain't doing that. Like, that that is an incredible performance by a quarterback that has done nothing but get better as the season goes on. And I am ecstatic that the Razorbacks are going to have this guy for at least one more year, possibly two. Like, 
Razorback fans, you should you're you're good. Like as long as he stays healthy, you are good at the quarterback position. Uh, now the rushing attack really didn't get anything going. Traylon Smith actually led all rushers, nine carries for forty two yards. Uh, Dominic Johnson got nine carries for twenty three yards. Did have a touchdown, which we'll talk about that in a second. Um, and KJ had thirteen carries for twenty two yards. So you weren't able to get really anything going in the rushing attack, which is fine. I mean that's kind of expected against uh, a team like Alabama. But in the receiving game, you were really throwing it all around to everybody. Obviously, Traylon Burks, eight receptions for 179 yards and two touchdowns. Man, and then the fact that this guy in the blink the cough, or however you say it, award semifinalist, which is for the best wide receiver in the country, it might be the most criminal thing I've ever seen. Like, that is disgusting. And I don't know who's voting on this type of thing, but they definitely need to get their head checked for not having Traylon Burks in there. Like, that's disgusting. But either way... Uh, he has a great game. Warren Thompson, two catches for 51 yards. His should have been a touchdown. Uh, as we were, again, we will talk about that here in just a second. Uh, Blake Kern, we know, caught the touchdown pass on the fake field goal. Rocket Sanders even caught a 17 yard touchdown pass there towards the end of the game. Trey Knox, four catches for 47 yards. It's great to see him getting into it as well. So, you know, there was just, there's just a lot of, uh, a lot of good play there offensively, especially in the passing game. And uh, defensively, Grant Morgan led the way with 11 tackles out of him. Miles Slusher had nine tackles. It's not exactly what you want to see from your safety. Uh, you want to see the linebackers get most of the tackles, but it did not happen. In fact, Hayden Henry only had five tackles uh, and uh, Bumper Pool at seven. So the linebackers still were able to be fairly good, but, uh, you know, that was obviously something that Alabama was doing. Because here's the thing Alabama. Is just they're they're five stars across the board. They're incredible. They're they're the best team, or at least the second best team in the country. Still, in my opinion, we'll see. Ohio State's looking pretty good right now, but like Bryce Young throws for five hundred and sixty yards, five touchdowns, and it wasn't like Arkansas secondary was bad all the time. Like yeah, there were some breakdowns and some plays and everything, but for the most part, uh, Arkansas was in good position. They just have better players. Like Bryce Young's like a five star quarterback, and he's incredible. Like Jameson Williams. Uh, I believe he transferred from Ohio State. Eight catches for 190 yards, three touchdowns. He's incredible. He's a five-star athlete. John Mechie, 10 catches for 173 yards and a touchdown. Just He's a five-star player. Ryan Robinson, one of the best running backs in the country, 27 carries for 122 yards. He's a five-star. Like you got guys that are just across the board on offense and in defense because Henry Toa, 2-2, two, two, Toa, Toa, whatever you say, Toa, Toa, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. But he transferred from Tennessee. He was a five-star. So you're just, And Will Anderson was incredible. Like, you have an Alabama team that is just disgusting with the amount of talent that they have, and you held your own with them. Arkansas is probably going to have on this team right now at minimum two or three NFL draft picks, possibly four or five, kind of depending on how things go. But at least in this upcoming draft, you're going to have one, maybe two. I think Traylon Burks for sure is going to get drafted. I think John Ridgway could get drafted. But besides that, there's no surefire guys. And Alabama, and how many are they going to have drafted? Eight? Ten? This year? And you held your own. I'm not sad about the way it ended. I'm not sad about how it could have gone or anything like that. You're getting there. You're getting there. You just lost to a team that's the number two team in the country that has better players across the board. There's no shame in that, but it shows how close you're getting and you're just, just about to get there and go over the hill and over the mark to be able to make this into a really fun year. As long as you can just keep it going and you got to finish out strong against Missouri this upcoming Friday, at least Black Friday, that is. I uh, want to remind everybody that this podcast is brought to you by Built Bar. It's the best tasting protein bar ever. If you haven't tried Built Bar by now, you are missing out. They say it's the it's a protein bar, but it doesn't taste like one. It actually tastes like a chocolate bar, essentially, because it's made with 100% real chocolate. And when you bite into it, you know you're eating something different. It's more of an experience that you'll enjoy. So... Be sure to check them out because I love these things, especially if you're working out, trying to watch your weight, you know, during the holiday season, especially because they're low carb, low calorie, low fat, low sugar, but high in protein. So all the healthy benefits on top of purely just tasting something that is delicious. Another great thing about Built Bar, there are so many different flavors to choose from. So go over to BuiltBar.com, use promo code LOCKED15, and you'll get 15% off your next order. Again, use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. Locked on Razorbacks, your daily Arkansas Razorbacks podcast. 
All right, final segment here of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, this was one that um, you know we talk about all the time, especially with Arkansas and and what what's been going on. But uh, I, I kind of made the jokes that were half kidding, maybe half tongue in cheek, but actually kind of serious about. Um, like I think I put out a video. I made a little creative video where before the Alabama game, I was like, if Arkansas is going to beat Alabama, this is what Sam Pittman's essentially going to have to do. And what I did is I put Sam Pittman's head on Stone Cold Steve Austin as he went through and was busting a chair over all the officials wearing referee outfits and then uh, ended up busting Nick Saban's head open. And then after Nick Saban was on the ground, then the SEC comes flying in trying to hit Stone Cold, which is Sam Pittman, and then he knocks him out too. So it was just a funny video kind of showing, hey, if if you're going to beat Alabama, you got to beat the officials, you're going to have to beat Nick Saban, and then you're going to have to hope that the SEC doesn't want, you know, want to make sure that that happens. So I know that there's a lot of conspiracy theories about officiating in the SEC and how they, you know, want to approach things and how they say, oh, well, this is more about uh, we want to see these teams in there. So we're, we're putting the putting the message into the officials saying, hey, we're you guys make sure that Alabama gets there into that SEC championship game. We want to see them play Georgia because that's what you'll get ratings and that's what people want to see. I know that there's always those conspiracy theories going on it, but it, it just is incredible to me sometimes watching some of the officiating in some of these games. And I'm not even just saying just from the Arkansas perspective, even Alabama had a couple of questionable calls, but it was like in the beginning of the game, like they were just refusing to call pass interference on, uh, on, on Alabama, which was just annoying, but they refused to call any sort of pass interference or at least holding on Alabama in the beginning of the game. And, you know, there was, of course, the thing where Dominic Johnson scores a touchdown, clearly is in the end zone. Like he's standing in the end zone. And the officials were like, yeah, we're ruling down half a yard short. And I'm like, what are you thinking? Now, they reviewed it and they got the call right. But just imagine if review wasn't there. Like, what? What are you watching? Like, there was a lot of calls like that where I'm just scratching my head. And I have no idea what they're doing. But it's it's just what it is, especially when you play Alabama, when people talk about Bama privilege, Bama fans get really triggered by this stuff. But what it is, what, what Bama privilege is essentially is just that they're going to be looked at differently because they, they will get the calls because they are, quote, better players, more talented players. Like that's and that's OK, like because that's how sports are. LeBron James is going to get the calls more so than some other player. You know, Tom Brady's going to get the calls more so than some other quarterback. Like it's just going to happen because they're like, well, these te- these guys are really good, so they they must be good to go, and you can't really mess with them or anything like that. Bama's the same way. That's the Bama privilege that people talk about. So, like in the early part of the game, it was funny because I felt like no, those aren't pass interference. That's just aggressive defense. Like I could totally see the officiating crew saying something like that to each other. But like no, 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 no. It's not pass interference. It's just aggressive defensive secondary and defensive coverage. So maybe that's probably part of the reason why it's they didn't call that. Like you, you if you're going to beat Bama, you got to beat the Bama privilege. You got to be able to beat the uh, the problems that come along with it. Uh, but again, I'm not complaining and just saying it's this single thing. That's just how sports are. Every sport is that way. When you're the best team, have the best players, you're going to get the best benefits to come along with it. And, and it's no different. So Arkansas just wasn't able to overcome that. And it's fine. They'll still be all right. They're still in good shape. I still like the way the season's going. But overall, it's got to get, you know, that type of thing was just really frustrating to watch at times. But again, it wasn't just Arkansas. Like, man, I did got some calls where I'm like, eh, I don't know about that. But um, I'm going to take it all day long. You got close. Touchdown. Away from beating Emma. It just feels good, doesn't it, to be in this position, to be talking about it, to feel like you're right there in the mix? Makes me feel good, at least. Well, appreciate everybody listening in to Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then. Razorbacks, your daily Arkansas Razorbacks podcast.